We'll move on to um, from one of Germany's most famous um, AI professors to one of Germany's youngest professors, überhaupt, <laughs> um, to Andy Dengel, who um, is going to be in conversation with Amalia. So I'll just introduce Andy because you already know Amalia um, uh, and let them uh, take off. We wanted to talk about digital, um, about search and digital learning. And as any parent of a school age child knows, nowadays any school assignment begins with search. So the child goes online and my daughter always tells me that their teachers say, Wikipedia is not a source. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's the, the thing they always hear. But obviously search is a huge element uh, in education and digital education these days. And so we wanted to talk about that and other things related to um, digital technology and digital learning. So Andreas Dingel, Andy, um, is a professor for computer science and education also at the Goethe University uh, in Frankfurt. Um, and uh, his current research is focusing on the predictors and correlates of learning processes in virtual and augmented reality, which I, we talked about VR and AR a lot. It's really fascinating where we're going with that space. And we're all just counting down the minutes till Apple's AR Brille changes everything. It's coming very soon, so you heard it here first. Um, and Andy's also um, looking at the value-based, uh, the, the value add of teaching methods uh, in media and computer science and education, and the potential of computer science unplugged for early computer science education. So, really looking forward to this conversation. Amalia and Andy, the floor is yours. Please welcome. Yeah. <laughs> So, All right. <laughs> Andy, thank you for joining me on this stage here today after actually coding virtual paths with primary schoolers <laughs> down in yeah. one of the kids and teens <laughs> programs. How did that go? <laughs> it was, the kids were so motivated and it was, yeah, it was a little bit exhausting, just a little <laughs> bit, but it was overall uh, a great experience. And um, this is actually the first time that, it, uh, that I did it with kids in um, that young age, so really this um, process of 3D modeling and 3D programming was just done by primary school students. I mean, that's amazing. And we were also doing this with um, virtual reality glasses so the kids could try out their own virtual pets and their own 3D environments by putting on um, virtual reality headsets and yeah, just interacting with the pets. So I, I hope they had a lot of fun, uh, at least I had. I'm sure, I'll, I'll ask them. <laughs> <laughs> well, in our talk, as uh, Clark actually said, we're going to explore the question of how something as simple and kind of an everyday task like the internet search could really represent a huge learning opportunity, something I think few of us really had on the radar so far. Um, with this, let me launch straight into my first question. So in the early days of the internet, we would basically use one of several search engines, explore a number of websites, and no one would really know what they would find. These days, we're actually searching, kind of searching for a response to a specific question, and we expect a simple answer. So only more recently, really, has research started to focus um, on kind of the promising prospect of searching as a learning process in itself. So what is the scientific evidence behind the claim that we might all learn at the cognitive level through something as simple as an internet search? So I, I think the thing about internet search is that it's not that simple. Um, so it, the cognitive complexity basically depends on whether or not we have an open question or on the other side, we might have a closed question. So, for example, a closed uh, close question, what is the height of the Eiffel Tower? I mean, there's basically one answer, and I, I think all of the search engines that we use nowadays um, can give us that answer. But for something as complex, um, and most of our questions are complex and open, something like, should I get vaccinated um, against COVID? I think that's a question where there are many different um, opinions on that. And um, this is this kind of open question. This makes it very difficult because nowadays uh, we don't just have to uh, search for information. We also have to rate their validity. So all that search engines can provide us is like browsing through this whole flood of information, but we have to do the validity check and everything ourselves. 
Mm -hmm. So I take it we're really talking about user behavior here, right? So what are those search behaviors really supporting the user's critical and creative learning? So let me think about this one. Um, when we have this huge flood of information, we need to do some structuring. We need to abstract the question that we were having. So let me um, use this example of should I get vaccinated against COVID? Um, I want to uh, put perspectives on different um, aspects of this question. And now, um, when I use a search engine, I need to put these questions and these aspects into keywords. So I might want to know, okay, what are like the side effects of a vaccination? What are recent studies about the eff uh, effectivity of um, different COVID vaccinations? So those are all little aspects that contribute to my main question, should I get vaccinated? Something like this. Um, and so this skill of abstracting my question and formulating keywords that I can use in a search engine, I think this is something that really contributes to this learning process. And also this, um, of course, as a computer science education teacher, it's something um, especially dear to me. Um, this process of, of abstracting something is also part of computational thinking. So as soon as we understand how search engines work, um, we might be better at uh, retrieving information also um, in yeah, how we should rate this information. So for example, um, a question that can help us here is a question, why is, let's, let's say Google, why is Google so fast? How is it possible that a search engine can browse, can search through the whole internet, through the whole world wide web, like this hyperlink uh, structure of hypertext documents? How can this be done in a tenth of a second for my specific question? And the answer it is like, it doesn't. Google does not browse the whole internet just in like a tenth of a second. No, it just um, searches through its own index. So the main part of the job has been done way before. So when Google was crawling through all the different web pages and building up its own index, and now when we as users, way later, enter our own key terms, our own questions, it gives us um, a, this matching process, like what, what results basically um, can can suit our question, and on the other side, in what ranking would we want to see these results? And I think this is one of the um, interest, uh, most interesting questions um, that we understand that these algorithms um, determine in what uh, in what ranking we see different pages. Okay, so these are really the kind of search strategies or behaviors that work best in terms of uh, of learning but they clearly make demands on users which they may or may not be able to fulfill, right? So how can we actually aid learning through searching from the technological side of things? So I, I think that's a tough one. Um, from the technological side of things, one thing that we could really do is to move away from the idea, um, especially in educational settings, that search is an individual process. So, of course, when we use it for personal gain, for our personal lives, um, we ourselves um, put in a search term and, and um, yeah, want an answer to this. But in most professional settings and also educational settings, we want to see information retrieval as a collaborative work. Um, and that is something that current search engines, that current technologies don't really support. So multiple people, people um, looking up a specific question and um, retrieving information, gathering information, and also rating their validity together. Like, for example, if I just found a nice blog article about whatever and I show it to my friend, we both might have different ideas on um, how valid this article actually is. And this makes it interesting. And I think from the technological side, where we're not yet, this is something where we could m really move at. So for example, um, the Symbi project that uh, from the discovery that is just in development that is supposed to have such a collaborative feature um, just for educational settings. And on the other side, of course, as soon as we understand how um, search engines work, we also might um, really yeah, benefit from this. So for example, there's um, actually from Switzerland, there's a project called Circia. 
and this is a um, didactical search engine where you can just put together your own index by um, having like a bunch of documents and then you have this Circular search engine build up your index and match it to um, your search uh, to your search terms and also get a ranking based on different scores um, and so this can really help I guess and so one last thing that could really help is especially for educational settings if we would put it in um, the subject so for example if we could filter different questions by subjects um, or yeah, just connect them directly to our curricula, that would really help. Kind of match it really with the curriculum in, in each... Yes. It's a huge task, right? Because cur kind of different curriculum basically in every country, but uh, certainly something, yes... Uh, yes, but in, in this case, I'm really talking about um, search engines for education, yep. for schools. So yep. this is nothing that we would wish for our everyday search engine, but more something like we want to use this and that search engine in schools and we have this additional functionalities such as collaborative work, such as mapping to curriculum structures. Yeah. Well, then I have a final question for you. So what do you see as the biggest obstacles to turning the internet search into this kind of gigantic, ever-present learning opportunity it could be? <laughs> okay, so the greatest obstacles to, to the ever-present, what was it again? It's the gigantic, <laughs> ever-present learning opportunity. <laughs> okay, the gigantic, ever-present learning opportunity. I think the biggest challenge to the gigantic, ever-present learning opportunity might, yeah, it, it might actually be women. Did you just say that? No, I'm talking about um, two women in particular, or let's just uh, call them um, female-sounding voices. Um, and I'm talking about Alexa and Siri. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so please don't go on a Twitter <laughs> rampage against me. So this is just, <laughs> um, yeah. But I think those are like the biggest obstacles to um, our everyday search and to turning this, what we do every day and what we do in schools into a real learning opportunity. So Alexa, Siri, Cortana, you name it. They are all different um, digital assistants that give us direct answer to whatever we want to know from them. We ask them a question, hey, how's the weather today? Um, hey, um, how high is the Eiffel Tower? Hey, should I get vaccinated? And we might get a direct answer, but that's not what we're looking for. So especially these digital assistants, um, they, they seem to make the process of information retrieval way easier when in fact it's not an intelligent software, it's just a software that puts like, that, yeah, it just takes the first page of whatever search engine lies behind it and gives you the result. So it seems like this is an intelligent answer, but it's just um, based on the search algorithm. So this is something that might really be um, an obstacle here. And to, to really address this and to really um, foster skills such as information and media literacy, which is something that we really need in terms of um, searching, and especially digital media, media literacy, um, we would really need students to understand how a search engine works, how this whole stuff with indexing, matching, crawling, uh, and ranking, how all, this, all of this stuff um, works so that I can reflect on this, not just on a technological level. I mean, there are actually three things that are important. Of course, I want to know how does a search engine work? How um, is all the process behind it? I, I'm not talking about um, teaching a fifth grader how to calculate a page rank algorithm from Google or something like that. No, I just want them to realize, okay, there are different factors that um, influence the ranking, that influence my own filter bubble. Um, second, of course, next to the technological understanding, we also need to know how to apply it. How can I apply, um, yeah, how can I apply my skills to better my search, to refine my search? For example, how do I use parameters as um, filtering by years or filter filtering by date formats or whatever? Um, and of course, like a third perspective that we uh, don't want to forget is like 
the critical perspective. So we don't just want to have information. Uh, so we just we don't want to be um, students who understand how technology works and who know how to apply it, but we also want to be critical about it. We want to have um, ethical understanding of what is happening actually. And this is something that I think this is um, the most difficult part that we really can um, foster this understanding of I take a look at this information that I just got that of this huge amount of data um, and I critically ref reflect upon it. So I really um, question its validity. I, ta uh, I look up who's the author, what's the reason behind it, what does the uh, author want me to think of this. And so I think those are like the three major parts um, of searching as a learning opportunity. Understanding how technology works, applying search engines, and of course, critically, and I mean really critically, um, questioning our results. Those are great last words for this session. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you a lot. Um, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, and thanks for having me. We're going to <coughs> give you an applause. <laughs>